Okay, so again, as you flip it, those numbers um, will repeat as you go through. So let's move down <clears throat> from 120 degrees. Let's move down to, let's say, let's start with 135 degrees, and we'll take, we'll go all the way down um, to 300, and then we'll get the last one. So let's look at uh, 135. The y is the square root of 2 over 2 divided by negative square root of 2 over 2. So think about that. You've got a number divided by the same number. It's just negative. So that should give you negative 1. That's like saying what's 5 divided by negative 5. It's negative 1. Okay? 1 half divided by negative square root of 3 over 2. That's where we're going to get it, one of those things again, right? So we're going to have 1 half times, we flip it, negative 2 over the square root of 3. The 2's will cancel out, so we'll get negative 1 over the square root of 3. You can't have a square root of 3 on the bottom, so we're going to say times square root of 3 so that it goes away from the bottom. The square root of 3 times the square root of 3 is just 3. And on top, we have negative 1 times the square root of 3. So that's negative square root of 3. So that's how they get negative square root of 3 over 3 for 150. Look at 180. 0 divided by negative 1. So we see 0 divided by negative 1 is 0. All right. We go to 210. Negative 1 half divided by negative square root of 3 over 2. Well, let's look. Negative 1 half times, we'll flip that, negative 2 over the square root of 3. So we flipped it. The 2's will cancel out, so the 2's go away. So negative 1 and negative 1, that's a positive 1. So we get 1 over the square root of 3. Notice that happens a lot where you get 1 over the square root of 3. So you're just multiplying by square root of 3 in all of these. It looks exactly the same. So on top, you would get square root of 3, and on the bottom, you would get 3. So that's how we get that for 210. Look we'll at 225. The negative square root of 2 over 2 divided by a negative square root of 2 over 2. So this divided by this has got to be 1 because they're the same. 240. Negative square root of 3 over 2 divided by negative 1 half. Well, we can flip it. So it's negative square root of 3 over 2 times negative 2 over 1. Notice the 2's go away. So you got negative square root of 3 times negative 1. That's a positive square root of 3 over 1, which is just square root of 3. 270. Negative 1 divided by 0. So negative 1 divided by 0, you can't divide by 0. So they write undefined or no solution for 270. It would be either undefined or no solution because you can't divide by 0. So it's always y over x. So we got just a couple more to get to 360. So I'm going to scroll down for these last couple. So at 300... We have negative square root of 3 over 2 divided by 1 half. Remember, that's flipping it, so it would be negative square root of 3 over 2 times 2 over 1. Those 2's would cancel out, so you would just get negative square root of 3. That's where that comes from. Again, I'm just showing you the work. Negative square root of 2 over 2 divided by the square root of 2 over 2. So that's a negative number divided by a positive number. The same number should just give you negative 1. So negative square root of 2 over 2 divided by positive square root of 2 over 2 will give you negative 1. Then we get to the last one, or 330. Negative 1 half divided by the square root of 3 over 2. That will be negative 1 half times 2 over the square root of 3. The 2's will cancel out, so you get negative 1 over the square root of 3, 
And that means we can't have a square root on the bottom, so we multiply by the square root of 3. So that gives us 3 on the bottom. And negative 1 times the square root of 3 gives us negative square root of 3 on top. So we have negative square root of 3 over 3 when we divide those. And on 360, we do 0 divided by 1, and that gives us 0 for the tangent. So we're just taking every time we're doing sine divided by cosine, which is y divided by x. And that gives us the tangent. So that's the only thing we left off from yesterday was what is the tangent. And so now we've been able to find what the tangent is just by dividing the y and the x. The sine divided by the cosine gives you the tangent. You, so use that chart, right? Use the chart that you just finished and think about this. The maximum value of sine is what? So sine is your y's. So what's the biggest <clears throat> what's the biggest number that y goes to? The biggest number that it goes to is the po a positive one. Right? So the biggest number sine goes to is positive one. And when when is sine positive one? At what angle? Zero and 360, right? So that's when your sine is positive 1. At zero and 360. <clears throat> now, then it says <clears throat> the minimum value of sine is. So the smallest number it gets to is what? Is negative 1. That's the lowest it will ever go to, is negative 1, the y value, the sine. And that occurs at what angle? When is your y value negative 1? So, I mean, yeah. So, it is, so now, we're looking at, did we get the first one right? We're looking at sine and cosine. So, sine is positive 1 at, yeah, that's fine. Sine is positive 1 at 90 degrees, okay? So it occurs, we're looking at our y value. So sine is positive 1 at 90 degrees. Sine is your y, remember, you're up and down. So sine is positive 1 at 90 degrees. Sine is negative 1 at what? 270 degrees. 270 degrees. That's when it gets to negative 1. So then it just talks about what happens with sine. So just think, just go through it. As it go, as we go from 0 to 90, the value of y goes from what to what? So from 0 to 90, y goes from where to where? From 90 to 180, sine, the y goes from where to where? From 180 to 270, the y goes from where to where? From 270 to 360, the y goes from where to where? Then do the same thing with cosine. Cosine is your x. The maximum value of x is what? It occurs at what angle? The minimum value of x is what? It occurs at what angle? As the, as the angle goes from 0 to 90, the x goes from where to where? As it goes from 90 to 180, the x goes from where to where? And all the way across um, or around the circle. So that's how we want to. The sheet says this. So look at this. It says, where are the trig functions positive? Sine, cosine, and tangent are our trig functions, okay? Sine, cosine, and tangent. They are all positive. Everything is positive up here in the top right. Only sine, which is your y's, are positive up here. Only cosine, which is your x's, are positive over here. Tangent is positive over here. Remember, tangent is y divided by x. So down here in the bottom left, the y is negative because it's below down here. And the x is negative because it's over here. But a negative divided by a negative gives you a positive. So that's why tangent is positive over here. So everything's positive up here, sine, cosine, and tangent. Sine is positive over here. That's your y's. 
Tangent is positive over here because your y's and your x's are negative. And when you divide a negative by a negative, you get a positive. And then cosine is positive over here. That's where your x is positive. Notice how you can remember that. One, two, three, four. All students take calculus. That's what they said. Okay. It's just a way of remembering when they're positive. All, sine, tangent, cosine. Okay. One, two, three, four. All students take calculus. All right, that was the, uh, page 14. The next one, and it tells you which ones are positive and which ones are negative to help you out. Okay. Find the value of the following expression without using a calculator. What it means is go look at your unit circle. Like in number one, you can do this right now if you want to. I'll do number one with you real quick. Number one, look at your unit circle. Where is five pi over three on the unit circle? Or look at the chart. Where is five pi over three on the chart? At what degree? 300. So five pi over three is 300. So we're looking for the sine, which is the y, at 300 degrees. So what is the y value at 300 degrees? You got negative square root of 3 over 2. Is that what it says on the chart for sine? Okay, so negative square root of 3 over 2. That's all you got to do, okay? That's all you got to do. Just find it. So we've already got them. So all we got to do is find it. So figure out what angle we're looking for and whether we're looking for sine, cosine, and tangent. It's already on your chart. So you should just be filling it in. Okay? Because it says without using a calculator. So that means you could do it uh, with there. Now, and then the last paper I gave you is right here. Name the quadrant where the angle is. So this is a little, this one could be a little bit tricky, but I think it'll be okay. So look at that one that has the all students take calculus. Look at that paper. Okay. If you take that paper that has the uh, different quadrants on it, like this, all students take calculus. Where is the tangent greater than zero? So tangent is positive and the sine is negative. In what quadrant is the tangent positive? And the sign is negative. Three. three. And it tells you down there. And it shows you. Look at look at quadrant three. It will say at the bottom, it says tangent is the only one that's positive in quadrant three. So you can look at quadrant one and tangent is also positive, but sign is also positive there. So it doesn't work. Okay. So you'll basically be looking at your quadrants and see where is cosine negative and sine negative. Number three, where is sine positive? and cosine negative. You're just going to look through those quadrants. So this really, even though there's a couple of sheets to do, it's really not a lot that you're adding into the unit circle. Okay, You're just looking at your unit circle and making some observations, and those should be your answers. So we're going to put all this together. Okay, You can fill in that 5.5 unit circle, just that first page. Don't worry about the other pages that go with it. Just that 5.5 unit circle and then the things I did today. And that should take us through everything with the unit circle. Okay, and I'll post it. I'll make sure it's posted so you can submit those.